what's up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day in this video we're going to take a look at venus in inferior conjunction a gigantic fireball over in northern turkey back on the 27th we've also got something that occurred here in the united states on the 31st i've been over here at the american meteor society i have not been able to find a event a major event listed here at the american meteor society this is probably the most popular website on earth for fireball reports and i've got a photo in fact a series of photos that came out of tennessee a young lady by the name of carolyn noticed something in the sky early in the morning before sunrise on the 31st i don't know if that is some sort of a large meteorite or if that's associated with the comets that are currently inbound towards the sun in the inner solar system i've got a series of photos i want to share with you guys regarding that here in just a moment but we've had several close calls with regard to near earth objects in may like 17 in the last three or four days and we've got more coming up in june as you can see here on the 28th we had two come between the earth and the moon at 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 so was this one a stray something that came with the comets or is that a another near earth object from an asteroid i don't know um, it's not listed at the American Meteor Society. They have found yet another comet, this time in Jupiter's orbit. The story came out on the 21st, and at first they thought they found something new. article uh, goes on to say, Freaky active object in Jupiter's orbit is first of its kind seen by astronomers. And there's a little picture of it right there. But since then, this article has been updated. On the 27th, astronomers have conducted further analysis since this post was published revealing that this object is a true comet and not a member of Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. And at first they thought that's maybe what this thing was, kind of a cross between an asteroid and a comet. So there's yet another comet that could potentially be named to the many that have been inbound. And we've got more coming. The Mac Holtz family is coming here at the end of October and at the beginning of November. Got more activity coming and may find some more in between now and then i don't know but i wanted to show you guys the comet that i did find making its close approach to the inner solar system right now that one right there is more than likely comet neowise that could be swan there's so many right now i don't know it just appeared on the stereo a spacecraft and that's a pretty good look at it as it's going through the inner solar system making its close approach to the sun it would be much bigger and much more profound if it were closer to the sun, like we've seen comets in the past. The closer they get to the sun, the bigger that tail gets. So this one here doesn't look that impressive on the, the stereo spacecraft instrument, but nevertheless, that's one of many that's going through the inner solar system, actually right now as we speak. Here's the object noticed by Carolyn from Tennessee in the eastern sky before sunrise. And that's got a very low trajectory, not coming in steep, that's very low. So more than likely, we've got some sort of a atmospheric entry here. Is it space debris? Is it a uh, meteorite, a large meteorite at that? Or is it associated with one of the comets that's coming in? I don't know, there's a lot of activity going on right now in space. It's open to interpretation, but that is definitely not an airplane, in my humble opinion. She took several photos of this in a matter of a few seconds. This was number one, and you're going to see it gets lower in the sky. There it's lower, getting close to that tree line right there. It's very bright at the front, has a long tail behind it. Here's another good look at it right here. Couldn't find anything over at the American Meteor Society. So she was either the only one that saw this very spectacular event from Tennessee, or this has got something to do with maybe the comets. I, I don't know. Here it is again, very, very low. Looks like it's headed towards the ground. So that tells you right there, that is not an airplane. It's behind the tree line right there, almost out of view. She managed to get one more click in. She just started clicking the phone as fast as she could. Here's the same photos in the same order, enhanced. All I've done is flip it. Light is dark and dark is light. That's the first photo when it was a little higher above the tree line. You can see it's making a fast dive towards the planet or it's going past the Earth. Difficult to tell. 
did not see any other reports at the American Meteor Society. But she did a fantastic job photographing this thing. Just incredible. So it must have been what's considered a long duration event. And what I mean by that is it's a few seconds. Some last only one or two seconds. This was probably in the 10, 15 second range. Coming in at a low trajectory like that, they tend to last longer and, and, and are visible longer. When they come in real steep, they make a beeline right towards the ground. So a great observation by Carolyn out of Tennessee. Now we're looking at Venus and its inferior conjunction position right now. And that's where it's at. From Earth, we're looking at the dark side of Venus, okay? The bright side is behind Venus that we don't normally see when it's in inferior conjunction. Inferior conjunction is simply when Venus goes between the Earth and the Sun. That's all it is. Superior conjunction is when Venus goes behind the Sun and the Earth and they're kind of lined up. Well, there's what it looks like actually right now. And we, looking at it from Earth, we're looking at the dark side. But for some reason, this passage during inferior conjunction, right now it is extremely bright. And it, it reminds me of what it looks like back here when it's moving right to left across the uh, screen during superior conjunction. I don't know, it is reflecting a overabundance of light, if you ask me, because that's between the Earth and the Sun. Normally, at that position, we're looking at the dark side. Yeah, we can see it, but I know one thing, when Mercury's in this position, it's very difficult to see. It looks like a little star going between the Earth and the Sun. I've seen it a few times. That is very, very bright for inferior conjunction. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not implying anything else. I don't know why it's so bright. It just seems extremely bright to me. Gigantic fireball above Turkey on May 27th. And again, we're looking at all of the activity around the Earth. It's no surprise that some of this stuff is making its way into the atmosphere. Like this one here, like the one we saw here from Tennessee. Got something large, more than likely a large meteorite over northern Turkey on the 27th. You can find a multitude of videos here linked below in the description box. Here's a look at uh, one of the still images from a very large and super bright, probably a large belide turned night today. And once again, you can find the link to all of those videos down below in the description box. Speaking of down below in the description box, I'm also gonna post this video. I've had multiple people share this with me. Um, I don't have permission to, to play it in my video, so I'm not going to, I, I just don't do that. But I'll lead you to the video where you can watch it if you haven't watched it already. And it's from Bryan, Texas. A gentleman by the name of Daniel um, heard some strange sounds in the sky back on May 27th from Texas. And this is south of Dallas. And I mean, they are absolutely bizarre. And they're coming from the sky. He recorded these sounds for over seven minutes. Um, prior to or during a storm, I don't remember exactly. I know it wasn't storming at the time, but you can watch that video also if you like. And again, you can find it linked below down in the description box. And once again, like we've been seeing here recently, for some reason, the radar out here in Arizona is showing some very extreme readings in southern Arizona. That purple represents the highest a cloud top can go. And those clouds, according to that radar and the radar over at windy.com, are showing these things in the 80 and in some cases 90,000 foot range. Just completely unheard of, but for some reason, these radars now for three nights in a row are detecting something extraordinary. But when you look out there, you see ordinary clouds. And there are ordinary clouds out there but not anything that drastic. I don't know what's going on, um, but we're still keeping a close eye on that for whatever it may be. Something new. I've been watching that radar for, for many, many years and have never seen anything quite like that. If you guys are new viewers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click on that bell. That way you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. If you're current subscribers, double check. Make sure you're still subscribed and make sure that bell is still activated. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery, and sometimes I'll use them in a picture slideshow, just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.